Hello and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Joining me today is Sarah Adi Coleman, the North Dakota Tourism Director. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's that season again, but before we get uh, to the business uh, of that, tell the folks a little bit about yourself and your background, where you're originally from. Well, I'm originally from North Dakota. I grew up in Bismarck, so um, I'm back at back at home. Um, I've been marketing the state of North Dakota as a state director for about 10 years now, a little over 10 years. Um, prior to that, I was in tourism marketing with the Bismarck Mandan Convention and Visitors Bureau. So I've been been a cheerleader for the state for a long time, and it's a fun job. It's um, always something interesting, interesting, and now is a really exciting time to be telling the North Dakota story. Well, I guess then, you know, how, how did you get? You've been in tourism then for a while. Was whether it be uh, Mandan, uh, Bismarck Mandan and now North Dakota. W what got you interested in that? You know, I, I started out, you know, came came home from college, married a rancher, so we, we knew we were coming home and, and started out in a couple different areas, a couple different jobs. I did some telecommunication mm -hmm. stuff and some communications and some writing and there was a sales position open at the CVB and it just intrigued me. I wanted to travel and thought it would be a great way to sell the community I'm so proud of, but at the same time get to travel and see the country and, and it ended up just going from there. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, 2012, uh, update the folks on tourism. How, how was last summer and then sort of leading into winter? We had a really good year last year. 2012 was up just about across the board in all of our metrics. So, you know, national park, state park visitation were both up, I think, 12 and 13 percent. Um, Canadian border crossings were up significantly. We saw 18 percent increase in folks that deplaned in North Dakota. Of course, that, you know, we've got more planes now and, and more flights coming in, and that's going to continue to grow in 2013. Um, really, every metric was up except for our occupancy rate, which dipped slightly, um, but that we expected because we had so many more hotels that came online. So overall, really good year. All of our attractions saw, you know, most of our attractions saw major increases as well. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, then you kind of let it. What about the upcoming uh, summer? I assume you're expecting big things, but it, will we continue to see growth? Will it level off? And so what are you expecting? We're optimistic. We're, we're very optimistic. We've got new product coming on board, you know, all the time. A lot of new attractions and expansions that are opening up. We're expecting, you know, hotel availability throughout the state. So we're really going to get the word out that there's new things to see and do, but also all those old favorite activities are, are available. So we're very optimistic for this year. In terms of numbers, how many people come through and visit North Dakota? Well, our numbers have been have been continuing to grow. We, we measured a number of different ways. Um, we, we don't have a way to exactly count every person that comes over the border, so we usually, most of our studies rely on visitor spending. So we saw really good solid increases in visitor spending in all of our studies that we do. But for example, if you look at like our major attractions, those had 4.6 million visitors just at our major attractions. So that kind of gives you an idea. Um, TR National Park is our largest just attraction and that had over 600,000 visitors so hmm. good yeah. good numbers well I understand your department won several uh recent so advertising awards. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, we did. Our TV campaigns actually won international tele awards, and then I think we won 11 of the um, local ad fed awards, a couple gold and then the rest were silver. So yeah, we were proud of the work of our staff and our Odney Advertising, our agency, um, put together kind of a nice creative campaign. And it's fun when you win awards, but what's even more fun is the return on investment research that we got that proved that those ads drew, you know, drew visitors and, and attracted visitors. And so it's the results that we like the awards, but more importantly, we like to know that for every dollar we spent on paid marketing last year, we got $119 back in visitor spending. So that's the real award. That's a pretty good return on investment <laughs> there. I wish we could all get that. Uh, what about the legendary brand uh, that you've had now for a number of years? And, continues to, to do well for you, it seems like. It does. You know, we, last year was the 10th anniversary of the legendary brand, so we kind of did a brand recharge and, and really went out to partners and stakeholders and talked about, you know, what does, how, how do you deliver on legendary? Because as a state, we, we, you know, we create the brand and we've got the brand promise, but we can't necessarily deliver on it. So it was really important for us to re-engage with partners, and we did that all last year, and I think that went over really well. and. You know, it, it. The nice thing about it is that maybe it, you know, it was built on those those traditional stories: Lewis and Clark, and Sakakawea and Theodore Roosevelt, and 
But it's just as pertinent to all of the current stories and the current offerings that we have now too. You know, you can have legendary golfing and legendary hunting and all of those other things too. So it's a very versatile brand that a lot of our partners can see themselves delivering, which is the most important part. Well, one of the areas that's booming, of course, is hotel construction in the state. Uh, can you talk about why this is happening and where it's happening? Yeah, we were one of the top construction markets in the last couple years. We've seen um, over 40 hotels open since 2011, um, almost 3,500 sleeping rooms. Um, they're statewide. A lot of them are, are um, west, but there are, there are 11 of them in communities on the east side of Highway 83. So they are scattered throughout. I think the really exciting part of it is that a lot of them are in rural communities. And that, you know, you're seeing, obviously you're seeing tremendous growth in Bismarck and, and Minot and, and Williston and Dickinson, mm -hmm. but a lot of these rural communities haven't seen hotels built there for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. And it's just fun to drive up to Carrington and see a brand new hotel or to, to drive into Stanley and see two or three brand new hotels. So it's, it's exciting. Well, and of course, the oil boom, how much has that impacted tourism? Well, you know, it has it has impacted tourism, I think, in a number of different ways. It's obviously created the awareness for the state, and as people become aware of the state, they then they're calling and then they're coming to visit. You know, we, you hear some isolated stories of people that just come, but for the most part, people visit before they move someplace or want to work someplace. So I think that, that just the awareness and the fact that there are more jobs has driven people to the state just to see if this is a place that they might want to move to. Um, it's impacted it in that the growth, um, some of the business travel that spurred some of that growth um, with the hotel markets. But our recent research showed that our leisure travel actually led the growth. So we had a 15% growth in leisure travel in 2011 and a 6% growth in business overnight travel. So. It, it, still, it still is leisure travelers that, that are leading the way and, and I guess the good news is that some of, these, some of this development is being, is being funded and fueled by some of the energy development but it'll serve the leisure travelers for a lot of years to come. Is, is there some concern that oil exploration is starting to infringe uh, on the badlands and sites like this from your perspective? You know, there are some concerns with that, and, and I know we, we um, you know, really want to balance that. I think that's everybody's goal. You want to balance development, but you also want to keep our most pristine scenic places pristine and scenic. Um, you know, to one of the things that we did this past year is, is National Parks has a um, publication as well as a website and blog, and we brought their editor out. And he um, spent several days in, in the Badlands and in TR National Park, and and ended up getting about 17 stories that he placed as a result of those four to five days that he spent in North Dakota. And most, every, every one of them was positive. I think there were a couple that, that you know, they're, they're, they're honest as well. I mean, there is more noise. It isn't, the sky isn't as dark. You know, there are things that have changed out there. But overall, I think his perspective was that it wasn't nearly what he had expected and that it still was very pristine and the traffic was nothing compared to, you know, most of the national parks. And so I think putting it into perspective and just really trying to make sure that we balance the needs of all of our industries across the state um, will get us in a good spot if, if we can consider all those. Well, Sarah, you know, where do people journey from to come to North Dakota and how do you track it? Well, we, um, we, we track it a number of different ways. We do research every other year that can kind of give us some insight to that. And then, of course, every year we look at our metrics that we can manage. For example, who, who requested vis visitor information to be sent out. Um, for that metric, um, Minnesota was number one, followed by Illinois, um, Wisconsin, and Ohio. So those were, you know, kind of not surprising. We spend a lot of our marketing dollars in Minnesota and Wisconsin, not so much in Illinois, just because we can't afford the Chicago market, it's kind of expensive, but but some of our marketing does go into that central region. So that that was kind of interesting. Um, you didn't see California and Texas, which are usually in the top five, just because of the sheer population base. Mm -hmm. um, but we, you know, we look at a lot of different studies. There's not one perfect study. There's, you know, we're, we're just constantly looking at all the metrics that we can and, and trying to make good marketing decisions based on the information that we have. Well, you know, has the, the positive uh, economic news out of North Dakota 
uh, you know, sort of along with the recent survey, saying it's one of the best states for young people and uh, to have different things. Have, have they boost? Have, have they been a boost to the numbers and and to tourism and sort of really to, to North Dakota's image? I mean, I, I, it's almost silly to ask the question. It has to, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. And I think especially a couple years ago, you saw really positive. In stories coming out about North Dakota. You know, now you get a few of the negative ones mm -hmm. that come with the positive and you kind of have to balance those and, and, and really kind of reach out to some of those folks that, that might, you know, for example, the Fargo CVB brought a blogger in from New York who had dissed Fargo and, you know, kind of changed her mind. And, and that's kind of what we do in tourism marketing. We want to invite them firsthand and ha let them have a firsthand experience and show them what we have. We aren't the same as everybody. We've, we've got unique assets and, and unique um, you know attractions here so I think that, that really what that's what it comes down to if we can elevate our image but be honest about who we are okay well can you tell the folks a little bit about uh, the uh, Heritage Center in Bismarck and and what they can see there and what's going on there it's exciting um, if you haven't been by State Street in Bismarck lately I'd encourage you to do that um, the Heritage Center expansion is well underway. I was in there just a couple weeks ago and the finishing finishes are all going on and in place and um, now we'll start building some of those exhibits so that, so that the facility can open this fall. Um, it's just going to be a great showpiece for North Dakota um, in enabling it to just show a lot more of the exhibits that they had and some of the collections that they had but also really um, unique um, new ways to tell the story. You know, more technology, more space, more um, more amenities. It's going to be a nice, nice addition to the state. Well, I want to get a little bit about the state and maybe to make it clear, where does the Department of Tourism fall in, in the organizational structure of, of the state? We're a division of the North Dakota Department of Commerce. So um, we're part of the, the Department of Commerce, which also has economic development and finance, um, workforce development, and community um, development. So we kind of work in that area um, with commerce. And then we also have an Office of Innovation and you know several other programs that reside under that umbrella of commerce. So then how many employees uh, do you have with the Department of Tourism, I guess. I have about 13 that work on the tourism, um, in the tourism area. So they, they do everything from, you know, general travel counseling and delivery of services like the rest area brochure racks and, and some of those services to individual sales to niche groups like group travel and international and outdoor promotions and PR and general marketing. And so we, we all of our positions are focused on marketing. One of them um, is more developed towards tourism product development, so working more with our grants and working to develop more offerings and more tourism businesses. Okay. With that said, at the time we're talking, session's not over yet, but, but how are you faring uh, with the legislative session this year? Well, we were excited. Governor Dalrymple put about a um, just under a three million dollar increase in for tourism. So, um, one and a half million of that is slated to go towards increased marketing, which will help us be a little bit more competitive with our regional states. Um, and then the rest will go towards um, grants, and so tourism grants, which we added, the legislature gave us that last session and we were able to fund a number of projects, and, but there was a lot of demand just for some matching one-on-one -on -one dollars that would help, help build again some more of these attractions to help keep and retain visitors. Okay. Uh, what about at the congressional level? I mean, people have heard about sequestration and, and cuts going on there and different things happening. Does that affect you in any way? You know, it does because we're part of the federal transportation system. Mainly that's where it affects us when you're looking at changes at TSA or security. Um, border crossings, obviously we have a large border with Canada um, and our Canadian numbers were up significantly last year and, but if they're going to cut back hours at those border stations that that may affect travel. Um, you know, we've also got some national parks. We have, we have um, you know, um, Knife River Indian Village as well as the north and south units of TR National Park, which staffing, you know, may be affected with some of those parks. We have more wildlife refuges than any other state. So um, there again, staffing levels. We, we have a specific niche marketing plan aimed at birding. And hopefully, you know, hopefully those visitor centers that are on those wildlife refuges will, will remain open. Well, Sarah, obviously uh, the years we have you here, we always like to go through some destination sites and talk a little bit about those. And uh, you mentioned Theodore Roosevelt National Park uh, numerous times already, but 
a big summer plan there. Tell us about what's going on there and what people can see. You know, they've always got stuff going on there, and it's. I think it, it's good for people to get out there, especially if you haven't been out there for the last couple years, because you hear a lot of stories about what's going on out west, and that just gives you a really good, you know, good reason to to go out and, and see. But you know, the hiking is just fabulous out there. Horseback riding, you know, wa wa watch of a wildlife is whether it's the horses or the or the bison or whatever you like to do. So that's always there's always activities outdoor activities out there. Medora is always expanding their offerings as well. So they've got new things up their sleeve every year. Okay. And then Lake Sakakawea, obviously the the water levels have been up and down over the last well, I'll say 10 years anyway. Uh, but so what's going on out there? Oh, you know, there there've been some expansions up around the lake as well, and you're right, the water levels were were up and now they're down a little bit, but still we've got great marinas that were built during those those lower levels that are are still very viable and and have met the needs then as those levels drop. But we've got some you know some resorts that are expanding. Indian Hills is one of the resorts that is expanding and adding some improvements and cabins and whatnot on the North Shore. Um, there's you know just a number of offerings throughout the lake and good good summer entertainment and recreation for sure on Lake Sakakawea. What about the Ronald Reagan uh, missile site? Uh, is this still a popular site? It is, yeah. It's um, it, you know, it's so unique. It's such a unique time in history, and and so yeah, if you're heading up by the Cooperstown area, that's a great great venue. Um, they're looking at extending the Nash or the National Scenic Byway up to that point. It isn't yet, but it's a great jumping on point if you're coming from, you know, coming from there and then wandering down through the through the Cheyenne Valley National Scenic Byway. Okay. Uh, are, there's many uh, many forts, and, and maybe we'll save Abraham Lincoln. But can you kind of go through some of the forts that uh, people could visit? Yeah, well, Fort Abercrombie, of course, is a great one. Just you know, south of Fargo by Abercrombie, it's um, they've um, actually fortified the bank there, and the, they've done some new some work there in recent years. The historical society has, so that's a great one, kind of out out west here or out east here. And then as you go west, um, uh, Fort Totten around um, you know Devil's Lake not far from Devil's Lake if, if you haven't been there that's you know there are buildings there there's a number of buildings there there's a bed and breakfast right on site that you can actually stay on the fort um, so that's a really fun experience as well um, then as you go maybe north um, we were talking about Lake Sakakawea Fort Stevenson is right on the lake and there um, there there's um, some you know scenic scenic beauty up there as well as some of the military life that you can experience um, Fort Union and Fort Buford out by Williston. You know, Fort Union was the trading hub of the continent, and the history there is is just really interesting. And and it's a that's always a fun trip up by Williston. And then Fort Lincoln, of course, is another one that comes to mind right by, right on the banks of the Missouri River on the Mandan side of the river. And there they've got a combination of all the recreation facilities with the camping and and boating and and hiking and whatnot, but also. Um, the Custer home, the infantry post, and an Indian village. So they have a lot there. Yeah, and that seems to be the most popular, probably because it resonates with more people, I would think. Yeah, and day visitors. They've got a lot there for, you know, interpretation and whatnot for day visitors. But, you know, there's 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 a lot of um, a lot of fun fun ones to explore throughout the state. Yeah. Well, these are always fun things to see, but are you, are you finding that cities like uh, Fargo, Bismarck, uh, Grand Forks, are, are they becoming more destination sites uh, in themselves? Absolutely, yes. Um, in fact, we've got a city strategy where we market the city experience specifically to smaller towns within our easy reach of our borders and then Canadians because they come for that city experience. But yeah, when you look at some of the venues and the number of out-of-state folks that they attract to their venues for concerts and rodeos and events and, you know, hockey games and football games and all those kind of activities, you know, um, for example, the, the Ralph, they have season ticket holders for hockey games for from 23 states. So that's a city experience. You know, those hotels fill, those restaurants are full, um, you know, the shops, everything's buzzing on those weekends, and, and that makes that city a destination. Well, and, and so many people probably think tourism is about the parks and just the park so it's not just the park no no ab absolutely it's it, you know and, and tourism is kind of a hard industry for people to wrap their arms around because it is it's the natural scenic you know all of those kinds of things those resources kind of combined with 
the cash registers that make it an industry. So you, you know, you still need to to have the services. And I think when you look at the, of course, a lot of the things that we talked about, like with the parks, there's maybe not a huge cost associated with that. So really, more of the dollars get spent in the hotels and restaurants and shopping. Yeah. We haven't talked about the International Peace Gardens uh, yet. Uh, how about talking, tell us what people can see and what's going on out there. You know, they have activities going on just about every weekend, so I'd encourage you to go and, and check online as to what their activities are. But with the band camp up there, they've got concerts, concert series throughout. Um, you know, they've got a, um, their, their um, new buildings up there are beautiful and the gardens are always nice. And it's just kind of cool because it's one of the few places that you can straddle, you know, straddle the border of two, two countries. Yeah, because you actually go in and then you have to get back out. You better carry your passport nowadays. It's a good idea, yeah. <laughs> it's a good idea to have your passport with you up well, there now. With that said, you, you mentioned about the Canadian traffic. I think you said it's been up. But so, has it just continued? Does it continue to go up? Does it? You know, can you talk more about the Canadian traffic? Yeah, more? it is cyclical somewhat on on the exchange rate. So obviously, if the exchange rate's more favorable, because the number one people Canadian, the number one activity that Canadians do is shop. They, you know, not that they don't have shopping in Winnipeg, but it's different. You know, it's just different shopping, and so it, it does mirror that exchange rate. But they spent about 15 percent more this in 2011 than they did in 2010 and again the border crossing numbers were up significantly we had about 853,000 cars not you know not buses or trucks but cars that crossed the border coming into North Dakota last year hmm. wow. uh, all right and uh, this is, uh, Lewis and Clark Museum in Washburn uh, great place to visit. Uh, tell the folks a little bit about what they'd see if they go out there. Nice expansion. I'd encourage you to make the trip up to Washburn. It's a very pretty part of the state as well, up Highway 83. But they did just expand that facility and so have brand new exhibits. Um, they also have the, um, the Centennial Farm exhibits up there, so they've got kind of a nice ag agrarian um, features as well as the Lewis and Clark history. So that's kind of a nice, nice addition. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, you talked a little bit, or you mentioned uh, birding and and outdoors people, but also hunters and uh, fishermen are, are part of tourism, and uh, we sometimes don't think about this aspect either. So, h how big a part does this play? A big part. Um, they're kind of one of our niches as well that we market. We've got an outdoor promotions person who focuses just on outdoors because that is the number one reason people come to the state. Hunting and fishing is a part of that. It's not all of it. You know, it, it also involves kayaking and golfing and all those other outdoor activities. But hunting and fishing is really what makes us pretty level in terms of, of the three quarters of travel. You know, most people would think that we're, you know, we're a July, late July, June, you know, August type of a destination, but our springs and falls are fueled mainly by hunting and fishing. Okay. And, and festivals and events, but it definitely plays an important part. Sure, sure it does. Uh, what about Governor's Photo Contest? I mean, I don't know how many years that's been going on, and of course you're going to have another one this year. We do, we do. Um, it, it's a it's a fun way to really get some great photography from throughout the state, and every year it seems to get more popular now that you can can do it online and through through Flickr. We've gotten some great submissions. Um, we do them in several different categories, and then we have a best of show as well. So we always unveil that on Tourism Week, which is you know right this time in May every year. And so yeah, I'd encourage people to to go to our our website ndtourism.com and and check out the guidelines and submit some photos because you can win hundred dollars in bragging rights. Well, now how many years has that been going on? I, I don't know. You know, I, I think we've I think we've probably had it going on maybe eight, yeah, okay. seven or eight has years. It been that yeah, long? Okay. yeah. It's Do you been think popular. the digital technology has been a big help to that? Obviously, I, I mean, think it's easier for people. Yeah. yeah, they can submit online now, and I think we had um, almost 800 submissions last year. Uh, yeah, so. I'm even thinking with cameras, it's much easier. You don't have to develop film, but anyway, that. Uh, What's the best part of your job, Sarah? Oh, that's hard. You know, I, I like the, I love the creative part. I like to figure out how to show North Dakota in a really positive light. So I, I can't give up that creative part. But I also like to, it's so exciting to see how our state's developing and growing and, and trying to pull the pieces together and help communities and help partners work together because it's a package. People don't come to North Dakota for one thing. They come for a you know a collection of things, and so working with everybody and kind of pulling together all those pieces is what makes it really fun and interesting. Okay. Well, with that said, what do you what do you think the biggest challenges are for for North Dakota tourism? 
Well, I think we, 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 we cha we're challenged in that we don't necessarily have um, a lot of awareness and a great image. And we're trying to change that one out at a time. You know, when you look at our tourism advertising research, it shows that even if people didn't visit here, if they saw our ad, they have a better image of us, which makes sense. You know, you show somebody a pretty picture and they know more about you. So, um, you know, I think, I think that's it, is really trying to expose more people to the state, bring them in, and, and try and improve our image so that people have a positive experience and something that, you know, knowledgeable that they can say about the state. Well, you know, you would think your goals would be just to get more people involved. So what are your goals for the next year, two, three? Well, we always want to increase visitation. We want to make sure that we're delivering a strong return on investment because we're, mm -hmm. we're a state agency and we want to make sure that we're showing a payback for those dollars that we're investing. Um, so that's always a goal, but we always have real specific goals for all of our, and strategies attached to all of our marketing um, efforts. So for example, you know, our brand new website um, just unveiled, so we've got real strong goals associated with that in terms of engagement and unique visitors and, and whatnot. Okay. Well, with that said, if people want more information, where's the best place for them to go? They need to go online, our brand new website, ndtourism.com, and they'll be able to find, you know, they can search a lot of different ways, a lot of different um, cues that they can use and, and hone in on regionally or thematically or whatever they're interested in. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us today. It was fun. Well, that's all we have on Prairie Pulse this week, and as always, thanks for watching.